This is uh, probably my biggest hero among the monks. This is Elder Joseph, who was basically a, a hermit, your classic hermit, who lived on the peninsula of Mount Athos. And his work, so to speak, was to pray all night. You know, he'd get up at dusk and go through the service of Compline, and then he'd start praying. And he basically just prayed the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, and sit in the dark. The old men used to say when when Elder Joseph prayed, Mount Athos would shake. You're not going to find him in Tom Magazine's 100 Most Important People of the Year, but, you know, if I was writing it, he'd definitely be in the top three. This is just for people uh, interested in the history of Colorado. This is Patriarch of uh, Moscow, Tikhon, who before he was elected Patriarch in 1917 during the chaos, there was actually the Archbishop of all the Russian Orthodox churches in America, which means that he founded parishes here in Calhan and in Pueblo, the churches that are there to this day. He was elected Patriarch of the church at a time when you know, they were dragging the priests off to camps. He was eventually imprisoned, and the causes of his death are unknown, but he, most people think he was probably starved or poisoned. You know, he met his end. He's considered a, a martyr and a saint of the church. This is another hero of the 21st century, Elder Porphyrius, who was a Greek elder. He had these gifts, you know, these charismatic gifts that were just, I think, probably unparalleled among the Orthodox elders of this century. He served for... 30 years in downtown Athens, kind of the the Athens equivalent of the Times Square neighborhood in a church where he'd be serving the liturgy and the house music would be pumping out across the street. I met this guy on an island. He lived on an island in Russia, Father Nicholas, and he was, it was kind of on my visit to him that I first got the idea. It kind of sunk in for me that the, this church and these kind of folks and the icons was something that I could live myself, that I just, it wasn't just like being another experience in Russia that I could kind of embrace this or I could kind of be like them or or uh, that, I, you know, monasticism was a possibility. So he's a real special guy to me. He's also, he died in, uh, I think, early 2000. This is Elder Paisios, again, uh, another great Russian Orthodox monk living contemporarily with Elder Porfirios, Elder Joseph, the first one we saw, he, he died probably in the late 50s, whereas these guys lived into the 90s. I had also learned on my travels some Byzantine iconography. I'm not that good at it because I don't do it that often, but when you're doing an icon, you're essentially painting an actual saint to be venerated. You know, this was a commission. This is Saint Genevieve, the patron saint of Paris. I did for a little girl that lives here in town whose name is Genevieve. The kind of exciting thing about iconography is it has this really specific liturgical function. You know, that sounds kind of dry, but it, it's, it's essentially just a gift to move your heart. This is our, our church here in town. It's the Holy Theophany Church. It's on Chestnut. Probably if you're in the Springs, it it's, has the big copper dome. It's behind the American Furniture Warehouse. There's a fellow local artist, uh, Michael, I can't remember his last name. He's painting the walls of the church. So it's really neat. Everything that you see there that's white is eventually, God willing, going to be painted. You can see that's the front of the church. And people unaccustomed to icons, It's if the church is God's house, then you imagine that there's pictures of God's friends and family on the wall. That's kind of the simplest way to think about the icon. And if we kiss the icons, that's just kind of the way that you'd walk into a room and you'd kiss your, your grandparents or your friends. You know, that's that's the Eastern uh, tradition. Like here we have, this is an icon I painted back in 1999 of a, one of the first, unfortunately in America, we don't have many saints, only seven or eight canonized right now. This is Saint Herman, one of the few American saints. We used to joke in the monastery that if you want to be a saint, you should go to America because we don't have many here, so it might be easier to, to become one. Whereas in Russia, there's so many that the competition's really stiff. But uh, I don't know for what it's worth. He uh, lived on this little island in Alaska. And, you know, you can still go to this day to, to the island and his body's there, the bones, you know, it's wrapped in it. You know, it's you can't see the bones, but you can re literally go there. And, and so he's one of the few saints that we have in America. That's St. Herman of Alaska. This is an icon I painted again in 1999. Just It's kind of the central icon of our church because it's, it's Holy Theophany Church, which, you know, theos being the, the word, the Greek word for God, and phania is appearance. So it's the appearance of kind of when Christ being baptized in the voice of the Father, 
represented by the lines at the top and then the Holy Spirit witnessed by John the Baptist descending on Christ's head. And so that kind of icon designates our church. Um, each church, you know, some church might be named after St. Nicholas or uh, the Virgin, whatnot. This, this, this icon's the icon for our church. Without being judgmental of, of any of the monks or any of the punks, I certainly never thought about, you know, like all the, the punks being, or the worldly people being evil and all the, the icons and other people being good. In fact, most of the monks would say that they're the worst sinners of all. And I think to a certain extent, your art reflects your own kind of imperfections and, and also your virtues. You know, certainly as someone for me who's, who's trying to be a monk, you know, there's that temptation with that side of the world. At the same time, though, I think what has always drawn me to it is is there's kind of a beauty in, in, in all things. You know, there's still, no matter how fallen, there's still that kind of that seed of beauty, you know, that the, the soul that was once the, a child, you know, and innocent. And, and I think even in the darkest images and in the darkest times, that's, that's always reflected. I don't think that can ever disappear. Uh, again, you know, and having these kind of distinctions of the punks and the monks, you, you just never know. You can't see the soul. You never know how so-and-so turns out in the end, you know, or what kind of suffering molds a certain kind of person into something really beautiful or something that's that's bitter in the end you know we we'd hope for always for the beautiful to triumph but uh god willing